Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to At the End of the Day, I'm Stephen Rogers. During the early New Testament days, we're familiar with names like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and a man named Jesus. Why do I bring those individuals up at this hour? I bring them up at this hour, ladies and gentlemen, because the individuals who I just spoke about, one was a leader, and the other four that I mentioned had six, perhaps seven more followers with them. And all of them, all 12 of them, followed Jesus Christ. The man that brought good news everywhere he went. The man who made promises to the people and to this day kept his promises. Twelve disciples followed a great leader, but there was one. Isn't there always one? But there was one that decided that he would not follow this leader. There was one that decided he would betray Jesus Christ, that wonderful leader who kept his promises to every single person that you could imagine, to every person whose path he has crossed. Even to us today, we are reaping the kept promises of the leader named Jesus Christ. But that one person named Judas Iscariot, yes, it is his name that has gone down in history as a traitor, a traitor of all time. Judas Iscariot, an individual who wanted personal gain out of betraying Jesus Christ, the leader of that time, who gave so much to so many and received back so little. But from Judas Iscariot, he received an individual named Judas Iscariot who turned his back and became a traitor. Today in the 21st century, we have a great leader in the Oval Office, President Donald J. Trump. And by no means am I going to make a comparison with the Son of God, Jesus Christ, and Donald J. Trump. I bring up the name of Jesus and the 12 disciples because, as you will hear, it's very appropriate to what we are facing today in this country with regard to a great leader and those who are supposed to follow that leader and support that leader and have done what Judas Iscariot did to the leader of his time, turned their back. Donald J. Trump, President of the United States of America, from the day he was elected to office, has kept every promise that he has made to the American people. Every promise. And as a result of keeping his promise, his base has become strong. His base has become so strong that the mainstream media and the Democrat socialists have no idea as to how to handle that base. They have been trying to put a crack in that base. But President Trump has kept us strong, has kept the American people safe, and is doing a tremendous job in delivering on his promises. So when he got elected to office, all the Republicans in office, the Senate and the Congress, followed him. They followed him. He went into the Oval Office, and they got elected to the United States Congress and the United States Senate. President Donald J. Trump, just this past week, put a proposal before the Congress. He put a proposal before them to fund the border wall. And so what does the Congress do? They decide to come up with a resolution. They decide to come up with some law that would prohibit the President of the United States from repurposing money from, for lack of a better illustration, one account to another account that would be used to build a wall. It's legal, it's appropriate. In fact, when the matter goes to court, and I'm sure it will go to the Supreme Court, the courts will rule that the President did exactly what was appropriate and within his power. But here's the point. So you have the United States Congress voting to hinder the ability of the President of the United States of America to protect us. And what happens? Well, of course, the Democrat Socialists voted to hinder the President's ability to do his job. But who voted with those Democrat Socialists? Twelve. Twelve Republican Senators. Twelve Republican Rhino Senators. That did what? They did exactly what Judas Iscariot did for personal gain during those early New Testament days. They turned their back on the one leader who has consistently kept his promise to the people. The 12 rhinos, ladies and gentlemen, 
are listed on my social media platforms. Take a look or Google, just Google, find out who these 12 traders are. I call them traders because that's what they are. That's the only way I can define them. You don't turn your back on your commander in chief at the hour he needs you most. You don't pick and choose the battles that you will fight with your commander. You fight with him shoulder to shoulder. You do what is right for the American people, not what is right for your political gain. So these 12 decide to drink the Kool-Aid of the Democrat socialists and vote with them to do what? To prohibit the President of the United States from repurposing the money to build the wall, to secure the border. Why did these Republican senators do that? Why did they turn their back on the very man that has helped them get elected to office? The only answer I could come up with is that they have been shaken by the Democrat socialists. They have been shaken, ladies and gentlemen, to the point that they are going to try to appease the Democrat socialists and the independent voters in their respective districts. So they will sacrifice the President of the United States and frankly sacrifice you and me and all of us who supported the President and continue to support the President of the United States. Because they're not interested in border security. They're not interested in America first. I don't care what they say. Look, I've heard some of these senators say on TV these past 24 hours, say, well, you know, I voted against the president's uh, position on this, but it's only this position. The other, the other issues that come up, the other proposals by the president of the United States, I will probably support. Could you imagine going into combat with a commander in chief and saying, look, general, Look, Admiral, I'm not going to fight this battle. Uh, I'll fight the next battle for you. I'll help you win the next battle. And meanwhile, the commander of that army, he's in the front lines and he's getting shot left, shot right, up and down, all around. He's taking on every imaginable assault. And there you are in your foxhole waiting for the next fight. This is what these rhinos did. They not only turned their back on the President of the United States, they turned their back on you and on me. But they did a lot more damage by their nonsensical, ridiculous support of the Democrat Socialist Party. Because what they did, ladies and gentlemen, was send a signal, and by the way, a false signal, to the mainstream media and to the Democrat Socialist Party that there is a crack in the wall of the President's support because that's what they're putting out there. That is what the mainstream media and the Democrat socialists are now seizing. They're seizing their 12 votes. They're seizing their 12 ridiculous, nonsensical votes. They're seizing on those votes and creating a narrative that, ah, finally, finally they're standing up to the President of the United States. Finally, there's a crack in that wall. Folks, the only crack I see is a crack in their heads. That's where the crack is, because if they were going to use their heads, they would stand shoulder to shoulder with President Trump and do what is right for the American people. But they didn't. It is now history. So what do we do about it? What do we do? I've had emails and messages from people all over the country asking me, what can we do about these 12 traitors? And you know me, I don't use names like traitor and rhino very much. But I've got to tell you, folks, when you're not loyal, when a person is not loyal to the man that has been loyal to them, when a person is not loyal to the President of the United States who has given so much to us and has elevated our quality of life, when they're not loyal to him, well, don't expect me to be loyal to you. And let this be a warning. Let this be a warning to every rhino out there on every level of government. I don't care if you're running for mayor, for a county office, for a state office, or a future federal office. Here's how this is going to work. And this is what I'm sharing with people. You turn your back on the President of the United States, that means you're turning your back on the American people who put him in office. You could be sure that we will turn our back on you. Every single rhino, folks, they need to be primaried. That is what 
political activists. That is what political operatives, that is what political bosses fear, that there will be so many of us that will take strong action against these rhinos, against the people that they control. That is what they fear. They don't fear rallies. They don't fear most of the time when we come on TV and express our views. What they fear is action on the ground. So those of you who have called me and messaged me, find out how you can primary those rhinos. Give them a run for the money, and you'll be surprised how fast they're either going to sing a song to a different tune, or you will find a candidate that will throw them out of office. It makes no sense to me to support a Republican candidate who supports the Democrat Socialist Party, even on one issue, even on one issue. You don't like what you see? Don't vote. Don't show up. Don't show up. Your acts are cowardly anyway, so don't show up. Or how about abstaining? How about that? Or if your vote is meaningless, if your vote is meaningless, like it was here in this case, vote yes to show your support for the President of the United States. But you see, it doesn't work that way with these people. Because as my wife quite often says to me, these people, these individuals who promise us so much and deliver so little, have a collar around their neck. And they have a leash attached to that collar. And when the political boss or the special interest group leader says, jump, they must jump. Now, once in a while, they may get a little brazen, but on bended knee, they must do what they're told. Why, folks? Why? Well, it goes to the answer to the question that I've been asked quite often. How is it that you, Mr. Rogers, and some of your colleagues could get on national television, could make speeches, could talk about what people should do and what you are going to do in order to address this problem? How is it that you could talk the way you do? And here's the answer, folks. Those of us, like President Donald Trump, owe nothing to these people. Owe nothing. No political appointments, no jobs, no salary, nothing. Our family members, not employed by any of these political parties or these political entities or these special interests. We owe nothing, which means we don't have a collar and we don't have a leash, a leash attached to that collar. In other words, folks, we are free to speak our mind. And we do speak our mind. And it's not only me. There are thousands of people just like me who are out there on the ground saying what needs to be said. And you know what needs to be said? The whole truth and nothing but the truth. And that's what I'm sharing with you tonight, the truth. Now, after this is aired, I will hear from Republican operatives. I will hear from politicians. I will hear from them who will be oh so upset that I took this position on the air. Why are they upset? You only get upset if someone is telling the truth. So you have a president of the United States in the Oval Office who owes nothing to no one. You have people out there fighting the good fight of faith without a collar around their neck and a leash attached to it. And then you have the 12. The 12 individuals, the 12 rhinos, the 12 traitors who turned their back on the president of the United States and the people of this country with regard to border wall security, with regard to our safety and the safety of our children. The 12. Those 12, in my view, I am sure that 12 out of 12, somehow, some way, have a collar around their neck and a leash attached to it. I do not buy the story. I do not buy the fact that some way, somehow, they really thought about this and, and it caused them to say no to the president and yes to the Democrat socialists. 76,000 apprehensions, folks. A lot of them are criminals. And now, and now because of the crack that they put in the wall, you know, it's a fake crack, believe me. The president is strong. The president is tough. And you and I and millions of us are winners. But in their view, they put a little crack in the wall. Well, because of what they did, the mainstream media's narrative now is, let's go and widen that crack. Let's go 
and do what we have to do to continue to divide the president's party. The only people divided in the president's party, the only people divided in the Republican Party are the rhinos and the true Republican patriots of this country who are standing with President Donald Trump at this hour. So folks, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, as these rhinos continue to travel the road that they chose to travel down with the Democrat socialists, we, we at the end of our day will remember what they did. We will remember that they turned their back on President Donald J. Trump and they turned their back on us. And at the end of our day, we will turn our backs on them. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless the United States of America.